So on my very first project, I was um, and I started off as a software engineer, building large uh, custom systems for enterprises. And so, in, in building the end-to-end -end systems, from security to app development, uh, building deployment, databases, messaging, installations, and really what you might call a full stack developer uh, well before there was really such a thing. And, and one of the key lessons I learned on this project was what motivates us. Releasing and receiving software motivates both the creators, the engineers and others, and the end users. And so it's not uh, you know, Hawaiian shirt days or contrived team building exercise. It's really after two long years on this project that I was thrilled when the software I helped create Center. So I immediately knew that this was what motivated my work. And I think if you ask most people developing and delivering software systems, years to release the software system to users. And the primary reason for this was uh, there was for this delay was system complexity. So we there was a 75 had to be manually installed at the logistics centers. Uh, and the work got batched and batched and delayed and delayed. And I found it maddening that it would take us days to portion, uh, meaning not the software system built and deployed within a simple shared integration. So it was while I was on this project that I saw a single page industry magazine advertisement with a picture of a keyboard button with the word integrate on it. And to me, integrate the, the complete software system from recent changes, the better chance we could regularly release the software to the end users while at the same time motivating the software users and the software creators. And this is what motivates me every day and why um, I create continuous delivery systems for customers today. So with continuous delivery, you are integrating the entire software system, the application code, the configuration, the infrastructure, and the data uh, with every code commit. So in doing this, you're reducing the time it takes to release software to the end of users. And this gets us both to the, the collective goal of, uh, for users and creators of uh, being able to release software and getting the feedback all along the way. So I've always been interested in turning things up to 11. That is what I'll be going over in this live lesson, is really how to apply this continuous mindset, running things with every change. ...that can occur and assure that compliance is something that's everyone's job. with all of our internal policies. And then a heroic effort ensues of people discovering or creating documents and other artifacts that detail uh, their policies along with checklists that stipulate the software system. Uh, and this often includes signed approvals from bodies like change advisory boards. Um, and if the scope of the audit is at an enterprise level, people might be spending late nights and weekends preparing for the audit running through mock Q&As, uh, maybe after the audit, the team receives a report based on a snapshot. If I were to view it through a cynical lens, issues that arose. So most of these typical activities involved in compliance are nothing And these activities are often focused on human failure versus without fixing uh, the root cause or the root causes of the problem. Activities are focused on a single point in time, uh, a single event. They don't consider the reality that software is really a dynamic system. It's always changing. 
So what are the challenges that you often see when it comes to compliance? So one is that uh, there's an inability to scale, uh, inability to, uh, to adapt to the, the speed of change at scale. And when you consider in the cloud, the large scale that can be achieved instantly where you can launch hundreds if not thousands of resources, manual compliance just won't cut it. And so with the ability to make changes through APIs via the um, can be exponential, and which makes them extremely difficult to assess without a systematic and an automated approach. So another challenge is you have these compliance events where you have these monumental efforts to comply with internal and external audits. So Martin Fowler is fond of saying that continuous integration makes integration a non-event. Without continuous compliance, audits and these other reviews become these events that take up a lot of time and a lot of resources. The other challenge is these manual efforts, repeatedly performing the same manual efforts to achieve you know, quote, compliance with organizational policies. Without continuous compliance, your organization is always non-compliant because of the rapid change in state and the inability to assess compliance without a fully automated approach. the change for their end users. Because fully or partially, there's often this separate event in the release life cycle during which a, a person or a team in a manual process, the, the results are often suspect and, and they don't reduce risk. And even worse, because it takes so much time, teams will forego these checks uh, which expose them to greater risk. And this approach reduces effective feedback from end users and increases the risk when software systems are non-compliant with the organization's policies. So continuous to the current state of compliance, I want you to consider how you will fix these problems that occur when you have these organizational silos, you, you have these manual processes, you have these compliance events. So the lesson, you will learn how to practices in which you automate, you test, you codify uh, with every change. And so to conclude this section, I want you to watch a short video to compliance, as this is the entire purpose of this live lesson, is for you to learn how to apply uh, these practices to compliance. Continuous delivery helps teams deliver software at the click of a button. Every part of the software delivery process is This includes the application code, configuration, the infrastructure, and database changes. Really everything. One way to visualize continuous assembly line where cross-functional engineers work on various parts of the software. Teams might only deliver software every few months or so. It's because of manual error-prone processes. Often, pieces of the delivery package go back and forth between teams separated by silos. ...at the 11th hour with teams vowing to never repeat it again. With continuous delivery, software can be delivered several times a day, once a week, or as often as you want. It's always in a releasable state. When compared to traditional delivery methods, Continuous delivery offers two key software. The second is that there aren't any walls between the teams. Instead, there are delivery teams that are made up of developers, testers, DBAs, operations, and so on, all contributing to a single path to production. If the change is a change to the infrastructure, the data, or whatever, the entire analyzed and deployed. When it passes all these checks, it becomes a release candidate that could potentially be released to users. If the business chooses 
Now, when a problem is discovered, quick feedback notifies team members that something's wrong and they need to fix it, and the assembly line stops. This is when poly-skilled experts fix the issue, scripts are updated, and when all the acceptance criteria are met, moves along in the Continuous delivery is concerned with all parts of a software system. This way, software gets to users quicker and in a more predictable manner.